I'm ready as an egg. What does that even mean? I don't want to know. What? Shit, is that a Norwegian only saying? <laughs> Welcome to number one crude mistakes. I'm KJ from Crude But Efficient, and with me as always is Håvar from Behind the Mistakes and Glenn from Number One Projects. Hi guys, how's your week been? Should we start with Glenn? Uh, last weekend I started the new, the next grown-up project. Mm. Started work on the downstairs toilet. Mm. So I've started on the plumbing and the electrics. Mm. And that is about it for my week, apart from going to work. <laughs> <laughs> so are, are you going to be, be done... Uh, on Tuesday, or something like that. Uh, possibly. Considering your your track record with speed in home renovation. Well, I've actually got the um, next weekend to myself, so yeah, I know I should make some really good progress on it. Yeah. Nice. Should... A week into yourself. <sighs> <laughs> uh, I remember that. I think. In the before <laughs> times. Yeah. In the early days. Now we've covered what we did. Let's go on to. <laughs> Oh, sorry, did you, can, two have, uh, did you two have something to say? I can well. follow up. Uh, I've done some plumbing as well, or I've had plumbing done oh, to, 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 to the house. <laughs> to the house. I need to specify. No, no more children um, for Havard. <laughs> <laughs> That's another topic. <laughs> well, we've had uh, the contractor uh, doing all the excavating around on our yard, and then the plumber came and connected the new drain and sewage pipe to the house. And of course, that connection point is within a well inside my workshop. Mm. And, nice. and of course, um, I was away that day, so I managed to convince the plumber to do the jackhammering to clear all the concrete around the old metal pipes before he connected the new ones. And of course, removing the concrete lining of that well, it's straight onto the sand ground that's under the house. And of course, when he disconnected those pipes, something has, of course, dripped down into that sand. So now every time there's a draft, you get an updraft from that well. There's a... So you have a septic kind of, crawl space. It's a, it's a weird bouquet in the workshop these days. Uh, so, if you're asking me what I'm doing this weekend, I'm mixing cement and making a new liner for that well. <laughs> oh dear, that sounds awful. <laughs> it's terrible, but I mean, if you if you spend more than 10 minutes in the workshop, you get used to it, and then you can't feel it anymore. It just sounds really shit. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> but that being said, we now got new pipes inside and outside, and we got we doubled our parking space outside and I actually got the contractor to put the kind of gravel down and compress it in such a way that it's ready to just uh, make a sole for a garage or, I mean, workshop oh, okay. sometime so some, in the future. Some hardcore put down. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. And then, of course, I posted a video about the, the old septic tank. It's actually just removed the upper half of it and then it's just filled with gravel and debris and so on and I took a picture of it and said could this be a Colin Firth bunker underneath my workshop but I don't think there's enough cleaning agents in the world to make uh, <laughs> make me comfortable repurposing that for anything else than <laughs> just I think, landfill I think I have the solution for you just carpet it <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's bathrooms, a, that's bathrooms a... clean for years in this country. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's British, the Brit bathroom British bunker. Yeah. <laughs> nice. The British solution for everything: carpet it. <laughs> Carpet tunnel syndrome. I don't know. <laughs> so, did uh, what did you get up to at the weekend, KJ? Well, not much, not much. Uh, I spent 11 hours on a train, so that was fun. But uh, but why I took the train was fun, because I was at the uh, Skaperfestivalen in Oslo, where I met a lot of uh, handsome bearded men, but but one one specific. You're talking about Peer and Grunfunkel. <laughs> <laughs> but Leo was, was one of those who, who, who didn't have a beard, I must, uh, I must say. <laughs> 
But no, uh, I was, of course, talking about Hovar. So now I'm the, the connection point has actually met both of you and can verify that, that all of us three are real persons and not just AI uh, made up by Glenn for having someone to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> but in saying that, I realized when claiming that Glenn is the real person that then I would could be an AI construct claiming to be a real person. So that doesn't really work. Uh, but uh, but anyhow, going back to um, Fete Island, it was it was really nice meeting a lot of uh, mainly Norwegian makers. At at one point at the uh, dinner in the evening, it felt like I was in the the patron shout out for three Northern makers <laughs> because <laughs> I was more or less surrounded by their top tier patrons. <laughs> but it was fine. So start at the beginning, KJ. You got there on the Friday. Yes. Yes, yep. I got there on the Friday and uh, met up with Leo from Grundfunkel and uh, we went over to Rasmus Forge. Is and, that far away from, is, it, is that in I, Oslo? Yeah, it was close enough. Took the subway about six stops or something like that. Oh, okay. And there we were, were about uh, five, ten people who uh, met up there and uh, had a play at the forge and uh, had some pizza. And that was that was lovely. Got to start uh, Rasmus Sticker wall uh, power hammer, <laughs> which was fun. You were the first. Uh, Leo was the first, actually. I, but I, I, I think I covered most area <laughs> 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 with the biggest stickers. And then it was uh, that was <laughs> all. Well, that was, it was that was an evening, an e- enough of an evening. And then it was the the Saturday for the actual Skaper Festival, and which was mostly a lot of listening to a lot of presentations and live podcast and that sort of thing. But also hanging out with different makers and seeing all of the wonderful things they they had there to to present. I think I I, I tried to film a bit of it. I think I have like forty five minutes of video. That I, I think I will try to edit into some sort of video to put up put up on YouTube for the world world to see. Sick. How did you find it, Havard? Oh, it was uh, brilliant. What I can remember of it, um, I spent fifteen hours. Uh, in a car prior to Skaper Festivalen. I started on Thursday, uh, driving one way uh, to my home place. It's seven and a half hours. And then attended a funeral on Friday. Uh, and then straight after, I hit the car and drove through the night. And then was home at Saturday morning. Uh, had a slow start with the kids. Uh, tag teamed with my wife that went away from the weekend. So I dropped the kids off at their aunt and then spent four hours at Skaper Festivalen, but um, sleep deprivation did <laughs> <laughs> did affect the atmosphere, but it was really nice. Um, I attended last year as well, uh, but then I didn't see very much of the presentations and meet up with a lot of people. So that's the difference now. I saw the, the stands and everything all around the venue was very much the same as last year so there wasn't too much new to see but uh, meeting all the different people uh, other youtubers other podcasters and people that i've only spoken through online it's really nice so um, i'm looking forward to next year as well and it's getting better i like the venue it's like the the new library dead center in oslo and it's it's open for all. It's nice architecture. It's um, really good acoustics. And of course, it's free. So everyone can meet up and there's a lot of kids there. And it really helps the atmosphere going. So I, I hope they can. a beautiful building. Yeah. So I hope they can manage to keep it there because it's easy to get there. And of course, being free makes it a brilliant arrangement for all kinds of people just wanting to drop by. If you start taking tickets then it well you lose a lot of people that are just curious about what is the maker community and what is this and then it's just other makers meeting other makers and then i think it loses kind of its purpose yeah there was like no commercial interest there no one selling anything and no one showing off products or something like that but just makers showing off what they have done and, oh, that's nice. and yeah. talking about things they've done so that was really and nice I, and if you want to have a stand, you can apply. And it's a very small fee. I mean, it, it can't be compared to 
any other marketplaces or festivals or something and then they will provide you with tables and chairs and power and everything that is needed so it's it's basically for free just covering the expenses and you can't get that anywhere else if anyone wants to show off anything they can just apply and if they don't I, I don't know the screening process but uh, unless you don't have something that's very offensive then I think they will allow you to have your own presentation and desk going yeah I think the screening is mostly for extremely offensive stuff and possibly dangerous <laughs> considering <laughs> all the kids and that sort of thing so which means I'm out <laughs> 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 and that being said, being alone is kind of a drag, I think, because you have to stay for the opening hours for the day or days that you are there. So if you don't have some someone to tag team with, then you're stuck there and you can't leave to attend some of the presentations and so on. So, uh, yeah. And then th those people who, who are sharing a booth really seem more happier than the ones just sitting behind like a 3D printer and scrolling on Instagram. It felt like being, <laughs> being quite bored when there was no one interacting with them. Yeah. But those were a couple of those. They seemed to have a good time as well. Did you both hang out for a while? Yeah, I think uh, I monopolized Howard's theme time pretty, pretty much. Yeah, we got a good four hours, I think, before I had to head back and not overstay my welcome at the babysitter. And get home before you fell asleep. <laughs> yeah, that as well. And, of course, getting home, getting the kids to sleep, and then you get that second wind. I had I had a plan of just passing out uh, alongside the, the kid that fell asleep the latest, but uh, I got a couple of hours on the couch just scrolling on the phone. And then, of course, the picture started getting in from the after party, which KJ was at, so then I started really feeling the <laughs> missing out part that uh, Glenn, like... Uh, <laughs> really brilliantly uh, made a couple of posts during the day you were you were really on to the social media <laughs> i actually had a really fun day doing the socials it was great <laughs> so did you did you meet some listeners both of you yes yeah yep. so we, we did how many have we got well, at, at least two at least a handful <laughs> yeah oh fantastic <laughs> it was really fun uh, fun meeting uh, people who, who listened to us uh, Stian Sörhus and uh, Arne from Mange Sisleren. Yeah, he was, I've never he, met he, him. He, he, was, he was really nice. He, and he just, he just was sidled up beside me and said hi and who he was. That was really <laughs> great. And I, I, I felt after talking to him, said, this is, this is a, a workshop I would like to see because it sounded like he had a really nice, nice thing going on there. Yeah, got a standing uh, invitation uh, whenever you go to Stavanger uh, to just drop by and have a cup of coffee. So he told me he didn't live too far off the airport and I'm going uh, for a conference in Stavanger in November. So if I get some spare time, I might hit him up and say, <laughs> do you do a workshop tour? <laughs> Please do that and, and uh, to see uh, if, if he was lying about all his space. Or... Well, if, you, if you do meet I mean, him... Must, you must get a photo. I've heard a clip of his voice, but I've never actually seen the man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can send you some pictures. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> and then uh, I can take a, a selfie with the the laser, which I'm still <laughs> in the market for. <laughs> <laughs> and a stack of veneer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the way, I got. <laughs> <laughs> Bring like got an a, extra suitcase here. I got a I got a duffel bag of some Christmas ornaments. If you could just run those through, <laughs> I'd love some of that veneer. Yeah, he actually had uh, some examples on him, so he could show them. It was really, <laughs> really thin and brilliant. Yeah, those looked really good. His samples. Yeah, was he selling yeah. it? Sounds like a traveling. No, salesman. he was just showing off. <laughs> okay, yeah. fair enough. Yeah, but it, 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 that's really interesting when they say it. The the different type of makers. I mean, some of us are really introverted and and you have to more or less drag the, the words out of us. Uh, whereas other ones are more or less salesmen who are oh, this and, and then I have this and then I, and I have some samples here and then I have it's all shapes and sizes in the maker community. Well, it's good that we have those who just uh, come to walking over the podium and says hello, because I, I'm the one standing in the back just uh, just interpreting, looking and... 
if it's up to me to do the first step, it's going to take half the day before I can find a suitable time to go and actually break into a conversation or steal someone's time. Yeah, I, I, I mostly kick myself in the butt and, and force myself to say hi, and then I have to follow up with something. Otherwise, it would look really stupid. But just force <laughs> myself to take that first step. Uh and I, I want to emphasize, I think I said it before, I say it again, if anyone sees me and you just want to say hi, please do. I'm, <laughs> as long as I'm not running to a bus or sitting in a corner crying or something, I'm up for up for a conversation. If, if I'm sitting on a corner crying, then maybe give me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> say hi gonna, first and then give me a hug. I was going to follow up on that. <laughs> if you see him crying in a fetal position in a corner somewhere, then you should really go and talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might be true. Or go for his wallet. <laughs> <laughs> that might be hard if I'm in a fetal position, but yeah. Depends, depends where you keep it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to go into that, but please try. I might kick you in the nuts. <laughs> when I saw you at uh, Maker's KJ, I, you, you passed me. And I think I followed you for about two or three minutes to the other side of the hall. <laughs> and waited, you, waited for you to stop interacting, blocked your exit. <laughs> <laughs> so you cornered me. I did corner you. <laughs> it, it felt so natural when you just came up to me and said yeah, hi. Like it was accidental. Oh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. that's great. But that's a nice segue. You mentioned... Uh... The Maker Festival for next year. You ordered a room already, Glenn. Yeah, we've Is got that... a room and we've got the tickets because I've got serious fear of missing out with you guys being <laughs> at Scarf Festival. And I think my wife picked up on that and she booked us in. Yeah. So you're both so... coming. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. Doing, I'm doing two days at the actual at Maker Central and my wife and my daughter are joining us on Sunday at the actual at the Makers at Maker Central but on the Saturday they're going to do something else fun in Birmingham Is there something else to do in Birmingham? <laughs> or is there <laughs> a, a WAPE conference like last time? <laughs> <laughs> well it is, it is a city I'm sure there's other things there than the uh, NEC They claim there's a city there as well but I've only seen the <laughs> NEC in the airport and the hotel so I don't really believe it I mean if you're interested in history and industry then there's a lot to pick from I guess if anybody's interested in going to Makers, by the way, next year, the Premier Inn's got some really low rates on at the moment. It's worth booking now. If nice, get it in nice and early. Yeah, yeah. We, we yeah need, I sure they should look at, into that. At least we need to now, before this episode airs, because then our two listeners are going to chip <laughs> in before us. and then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually thinking um, of bringing the oldest... Uh, as a daddy daughter date or something uh, then uh, I just asked her if she wanted to go to England and she's like whoa yeah and <laughs> she had no idea where it is she's just like ooh a trip I'm in <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's the attitude I like though how old's the oldest? I will be six by the time we go to oh, cute. that'll be a big adventure then yeah, yeah. brave of you <laughs> well, I mean, I would we not have... bring my five-year-old is, if I say. <laughs> this is just a way to ease the path with his wife, isn't it? I'll, I'll take half of the children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my part of the responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> no, they they are both in that phase now where they are really competing for our attention, and then of course they are also competing amongst themselves. So it's it's very nice to split them up. Uh, and we do that yeah. quite often to do uh, a daddy daughter date and so on and just to go out of the house and have some alone time and then both of them are brilliantly to bring along for various events and so on they are really curious and really nice to travel with so i'm looking forward to that <laughs> nice. You've not and i need some and i need someone to hold the camera as well so <laughs> <laughs> Not booked it yet, then? No, not yet. No. Um, checking out prices and venues, and then you launched an alternative. That seems okay, like price-wise and distance. Yeah. 
I'm guessing it's already. It's a bit of a walk, but it could be nice. It it can be nice. Uh, yeah. If you if you disregard the fact that this part of England does not have any walk paths at all, you have to be a car if you want to travel. <laughs> hmm. LA of England. <laughs> it felt like it. I mean, the, the only only uh, walk paths I I found was from the hotel to the airport. Uh, yeah, I I don't know which ways I went uh, between the exhi- ex- exhibition hall and the ho- hotels, but it didn't feel like there were any possibilities of going. Where so people tax- were actually supposed to walk. Taxi it is then. Yeah, just. Or how many seats do you have in your uh, tool chest, Glenn? <laughs> in the van, and you can. Yeah, it's you can a drive a. It's, only, it's a sports van. It's only got two seats. Okay, well, so it's. Uh, I'll empty all the tools out the back. We'll get a whole crew in there. Yeah, but still, I mean, it's a. Uh, Uber Glen. It's four I... four times four times back and forth. That's doable. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's got two really big steps on the back as well on the outside, so you can just hang on the back. Oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring my rollerblades. <laughs> <laughs> Look like one of those old timey uh, films where the police are hanging on to a single car and chasing some bad guys. Or something like that. <laughs> would be awesome. Just hang on a second. Have you got rollerblades, Havard? No. <laughs> <laughs> you have, haven't you? Uh... I actually don't think I have them anymore, but yeah, I uh, hung on to those for way too long uh, uh, in the early 90s. So. If you've still got them, I'd really like to see some proof, please. Just such <laughs> <laughs> Preferably if you, if you in them, using them. Yeah, well, still, it's uh, they. after the municipality did all the new pipes in our road, of course, they put uh, new pavement down and I still have that feeling when I see like this new black pavement. I'm thinking, ooh, this would be nice to roller skate on. And it's like <laughs> 20 years since I had some on, maybe, <laughs> maybe even 25. And I still have that gut re- reaction that, ooh, this would be nice to roller blade on. <laughs> <laughs> I still got some uh, scars on my knees. So uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if it's compatible with being 40 plus. I mean, from a, a risk analysis perspective. <laughs> <laughs> I would say no. But uh, going back to the things that happened the last week, uh, you had a celebration, Glenn. I did. It was my birthday on YouTube, that is. My first ever birthday on YouTube. <laughs> Congratulations. You stuck out, stuck it out so far. So my, to say. my wife made me a card. <laughs> <laughs> We need proof. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll post a picture of the card. I think she was quite disappointed. I didn't put it up on Instagram, to be honest with you. So okay, I'll, so okay. she she's leading the the supportive wife category, I think, <laughs> at the moment. Unless it was a very private card, then of course you can keep it to yourself. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> no, me neither. But I'm, I, was say, <laughs> you know, I, I, I can't. I can't understand it. You've not met my wife yet, have you? Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> kind of rude, actually. <laughs> I think I I celebrate four years on YouTube in November, which I don't have any time to do some kind of of celebration for. But are you? Are do you have any plans like that, Glenn, to do some sort of who one year o- over video, <laughs> one year older? What have I learned? <laughs> oh God, no! What 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 was my favorite video I've done? What was the public's favorite? Why are they so weird? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't think I do. I don't think anybody cares. <laughs> but you care. It, it was just a milestone for me. I uh, it was quite interesting actually. You know, in the um, the YouTube community where you can put a little post up on your own community page. Yeah. Yeah. So I um. Mm. I posted it was my one year birthday on YouTube and I actually got seven likes, which is a first <laughs> that normally gets no interest whatsoever, the community page. Yeah. But I haven't, I need to check out this community uh, thing because I, I can't even remember getting a notification or anything for any anniversary. Yeah, I saw that post, I, I'm pretty sure. 
I didn't get a notification. My wife logged it when I started. My notification <laughs> came from her. Yeah, that's. Uh, I keep forgetting you have a like a YouTube administrator hired full time. Yeah. <laughs> He's living the dream. Because yeah. I needed so much tech support in the beginning. <laughs> but that's, that's fine. I do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stop asking. I'll just do it. Yeah. But what do you count from when you? made your account or when you posted your first video when i posted my first video yeah yeah because i i think i'm around year second or something yeah and i i did my build videos on in on instagram the first half year so my my build video celebration five years is in in april instead so that means might be something to do do something with but we'll see of course if you can do it on the first of april then you can post whatever you want <laughs> it turns out magic can just say oh it's just april fools just just tricking you <laughs> oh, i hate april fools oh my god i had a customer two years ago now came out in the garden and faked a heart attack in front of me <laughs> i thought it was fucking hilarious that's like the worst thing you could do <laughs> Uh, short of claiming that someone's kid been run over i mean that's like the worst it was absolutely hideous i mean he'd got saliva coming out the corner of his mouth and just (laughs) just taking this bloody heart attack if that happened to me he would hope he'd die of a heart attack because i would have killed him uh, when i realized I, i i don't i do like practical jokes but there is just a handful of people worldwide that can pull it off with it being like funny yeah. and good i mean the april fools is just amateur night and it, it's not even yeah. fun and it's like oh I, I really hate it and it's uh yeah i don't know really remember where i got this from but when you do a practical yoke there's supposed to the, the time you take it takes you to actually do it you should take 10 times as much time to plan it and it should only take a tenth of that time to clean it up. <laughs> and if the the numbers are the other way around, then you're doing something wrong. <laughs> if you if you get a spur of the moment and do something, ta-da, and then you have to spend an hour cleaning it up, then <laughs> that's that's wrong. Unless it backfires on the one who's trying to do the prank, then it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. If it, then, uh, if it then doesn't. The... Fo- then yeah. the cleanup time should be 10 of that time it did the <laughs> spur of the moment trying to pull off something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, then it's okay if you if you take all that yourself, but if you leave leave the cleanup to the one who's you, who you've inflicted it on, then then you're doing something wrong. Well, I still work for that guy. I mean, the joke will be on him if ever he has a heart attack in front of me for real, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> you just take up the phone and film it and laugh instead. <laughs> Just walking up to the casket in the funeral and who's laughing now? (laughs) (laughs) I'm actually, I'm one of those who are thinking, I mean, why do we make people into saints after they're passed away? I mean, I know several people that has passed away and they were pricks when they were alive and (laughs) I'm not going to change my opinion after they passed away. Of course, I'm decent enough to uh, do not shout it <laughs> during the <laughs> the ceremony. But still, I mean, you can choose not to go up on the podium and blatantly lie about that person who's <laughs> lying very, there. Very true. Yeah, well, some people will get would get a really short sermon if you were, you were only telling the truth and being being polite. <laughs> well, we, this is Glenn. He is dead. Now there's coffee and cake. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Why are the example for this? <laughs> what did I do to you? <laughs> because your name is easiest to say in English, so that's my go-to of the three of us. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and you're closest to the casket, so I might as well practice. <laughs> oh. Only a few years older than you. Yeah, just because I've worked and, and hard that, and I look a bit rougher. <laughs> and that being said, I, I think some of us are, I mean, living on borrowed time sometimes in the workshop. I mean, it's just one accident away from losing the head or something. <laughs> yeah, that's really strange that you don't hear 
more about workshop accidents that actually are fatal. Yeah. I did hear some statistics on how many who loses a finger in like table saw accidents and that were in the tens of thousands every year worldwide. It's like insane yeah, large crazy. numbers. Mm. And then you probably have people drilling themselves in the finger, um <laughs> yeah, <laughs> losing stuff on their toes. Yeah, I mean some people actually use sandals in the workshop. I mean, God forbid. It's just crazy. Yeah, morons. Yeah, who would ever do that? <laughs> <laughs> that being said, I uh, I did see, I think it was Jimmy D'Aresta who actually were given the task by a friend of him that knew his time was coming up to make him a casket. And that episode was uh, kind of bleak, but also nice. But it got me thinking, what if I made my own casket? Of course, there's a morbid aspect of it just being that proactive but i could add some features to it that would uh, help uh, liven the the burial i mean some spring activated mechanism or something <laughs> sounds effect to someone like an arduino just listing in and then when the ceremony master uh, says something and then it just pops up and plays a jack-in-the-box tune or something like that so you just tell your wife just plug the casket in (laughs) the timer will take care of itself so a throwback to the first episode a self-cremating casket build it out of the rocket fuel (laughs) that would be really just just a little fuse in the corner someone's got to light (laughs) i mean you could program it and have a really specific song played or something like that at the funeral and have an Arduino listening out listening for it. <laughs> and when it hears that very specific odd song, then it starts to <laughs> light the fuse. And yeah, I'm thinking um, ooh, the rocket fuel was a brilliant idea. And I think there are some places where you still can do like this traditional burial bonfires where you actually put the deceased uh, on top of a huge ass bonfire and light him up so you could actually then do that in that location but less dramatic than that is i did some sound effects uh, generator uh, in a project earlier and you could just pre-record some messages and some knocking sounds (laughs) so that and then you have an atmospheric pressure sensor or something so when they're lowering the coffin down into the ground then you start hearing Dunk, 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 dunk. Hello? Hello? <laughs> I'm not dead. <laughs> Let me out. <laughs> so, so it's okay to become a practical joker when you're dead? Yeah, I mean... But not when you're, you're dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I don't care. There's what... not much clean-up, so... No, when I'm yeah, thinking you... what, what people think about me, then, of course, I worry about that now as an overthinker, but when I'm dead, I couldn't care less, so... <laughs> you just downgraded to the speech that KJ... The eulogy that KJ gave me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> quite possibly, quite possibly. I think I'm more fond of making my own headstone, but then to decide what to write on it. Oh, would you not just make it like your head and have a proper headstone? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. That might not be allowed in the cemetery, but just having like a Steve-O. I mean... <laughs> It should be more than just the head. You should have at least the shoulders and a couple of arms so it looks like you're digging your way out of the ground like a zombie. <laughs> could you put it on some hydraulic platform that could lower it and make it rise? So that it's, oh, he's only one foot out of the ground. Oh, now it's three feet out of the ground. Yeah, and you can put it on a timer so every Halloween it's a, it's an event. And the KJ rises <laughs> and then... <laughs> Some flame effects as well. And... I, th- I think what we can conclude here is that cemeteries are boringly traditional. I mean, there is a lot of potential there. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you can do a lot of things. I mean, the neighbors won't complain. They're both death and dead. Yeah, but the ones visiting the neighbors might have something to say. So should we do some guerrilla making and brighten up our local churchyards? <laughs> Some, some LED lights for a starter. <laughs> bit, yeah. bit of fun music. <laughs> there are a lot of possibilities there, but yeah, you, you could 
actually add to the population of the cemetery because I think someone would be scared shitless if <laughs> you added some smoke machines and sound effects and lights and I thought just adding another headstone without going the, going there one <laughs> well, night and that's... putting up one that's brilliant. <laughs> just randomly, just placing it and putting down some flowers and uh, like, uh, yeah, that's a that's a stunt you can do in like ten minutes. It's just yeah. three guys running in, dropping the stone, two holes, flowers, and of course uh, a lantern or anything, and then just yeah. dash. As long as you plan it out a bit, that's really easy to do. And see how long it will stand there before people start asking questions. And I do think that they have a decent track and re- yeah, yeah, they record know, of they know exactly but if you made it maybe we should uh talk to nerd forge uh about how do you paint something to make it look real but also old because if you paint the headstone so it looks like it's been out in the weather for 10 years and you place it in a corner it will take some time before somebody notices it i think but if you if yeah. you put something brand uh, new down, made in uh, epoxy or something like that, people would say that doesn't belong here. Yeah, as long as you put it down in in like the autumn or something, where when there's no grass to be cut or anything like that, so the the, the gardening is kept to a minimum. No one would really think about <laughs> there's another stone there. What's what's maybe easier, well, headstone wise is. At least in Norway, when they are burying people, they have a temporary wooden cross with a name on it because it takes a bit of time for the headstone to be manufactured and put into place. So then you just see a pile of dirt uh, where they put all the flowers on and they they put extra dirt because the the grave will be compacted a bit over time. So there's always this... Yeah recognizable mound of dirt and a wooden cross and that's everybody knows that's a a recent burial so if you just go in during the night and you dump off uh, 500 kilos of gravel and put a wooden unmarked cross on it and then you leave then someone will come and they'll have to dig it up just to make sure (laughs) (laughs) so that's a but then we're venturing into the practical joke uh yeah. See, mm. when I suggested brightening up the churchyards, I just, you know, just some <laughs> nice, <laughs> some nice lights, some fun music, nothing scary, no smoke machines, nothing weird, <laughs> nothing too weird. Did anyway. you go a little gothy on you? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's uh, the brutal scandis for you. <laughs> We're going to black metal roof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've actually th- thought that. Along that path, Glenn, uh, at least on my father's grave, because you ke- you keep putting flowers down, and then of course they die off. And then, uh, what if you put like uh, some small bush that doesn't grow too fast, but it can be over several years or something? And I- I've seen that all the cemeteries they they don't allow for that, or I haven't seen them okay. seen anyone do it. But it would be nice if you had. Like a three here and a bush there, but of course, yeah. if everybody starts doing it, it's gonna be, it's gonna look like mayhem. But yeah, I think there's some height and width requirements that you have to yeah, I would, be within. If if I got the choice of a, a plant or a tree over the top of me, it would be the Fagus sylvatica purpurea, the um, purple beech, something that'll last about four hundred years and get to about. You know, ninety hundred foot tall <laughs> and dominate. This is my headstone. Yeah, and just that's right. Ca- carve into the bark. <laughs> I was yeah. thinking more of these uh, Japanese, uh, what it's called, blood maple, maple or something. Yeah, the yeah. one with the very red and nice, and they don't you, grow like a uh, hundred feet you, tall. You Norwegians have got a thing for those. Oh yes, they are everywhere. I got yeah, three of I've them. Been... <laughs> <laughs> But they are got, they are slow they are slow growers. So uh, yeah. what one of them I actually have in a big pot because I'm thinking I'm going to bring it with me when we move somewhere down yeah. the line. Just in case anybody's interested, that's the Japanese maple, the Acer palmata matropurpurea <laughs> that Tavart's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's if you say so. <laughs> just, just as I was going to say, yeah. I don't get a chance to do the Latin names very often, so. <laughs> well, you, I mean, you can 
spit out just more or less anything that sounds cool. I mean, you, buy it. You, you can speak Latin to us all night, Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> I think, just let me lean back and relax. I think I've just, just lost one of our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> and I can hear my well, wife. That's good. Then you can count them on one hand. And that's good. Nice. I can hear my wife say nerd when she listens to this episode, <laughs> Jimmy, as well. <laughs> but, but going back to the lighting up a graveyard a thing i i thought would be nice would have something like like a wind a small wind turbine or something like that in your gravestone to generate power and then light up something so you don't, didn't have to plug something in but if there was wind there will i mean something a nice that's, technological solution so, yeah something that's moving and and could provide some sort of i don't know <laughs> some sort of happiness I'm just rambling, but yeah. Well, you could you could design the wind turbine like I don't know whether you have them in uh, your part of the world, but we have little children's windmills which are colourful that you they play with on the beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, so the you folder, could just have your wind the, tur- yeah. turbine just look like that, and that, I think that would bring enough joy just on its own. Yeah, but just have it connected to something, and then having it do something and something something joy. I mean that that is something it sparks a lot of discussions and controversy in Norway whenever someone are mentioning putting up some new windmills or wind generators and of course if you made them into these uh, children ones with the folded blades and different colors and everything I would be quite happy having one of those I could even have it on my yard it's like this one is mine 30 meter wide <laughs> yeah but i think it's something about the aerodynamics there because they are kind of noisy they for being so small they make a pretty high pitched sound so having a 60 foot tall one <laughs> like mounted on your house <laughs> yeah i know what you think of power i've got it so you know when you go to a museum or an art gallery or something and you can hire the headphones and as you're walking around the headphones are giving you a sort of um, an audible, an audio uh, thing to, an audio guide to, as, as you walk around. You could do that for the cemetery. So as you're looking at the headstones, it said, you know, this was John Smith. He helped, he helped find penicillin or something like that. And this is, I don't know, Bob Porter. <laughs> He was the right tosser. <laughs> it just goes through the grave. Would have been nice. Just goes through the graveyard like that. I think that'd be cool. I I actually, actually get the the information because when you walk around the cemetery and, and watch uh, look at the gravestones, you think, oh, I wonder who that was. I wonder what that profession that yeah, exactly. <laughs> written on the grave is. Yeah. And then you get get that information. So that would be nice. I actually I read somewhere that I think there was a guy. And he was visiting the cemetery, putting flowers down on a relative's grave. And he noticed that the grave next to it was really untidy and there was never any attention given to it. So then he just picked up a flower, mostly as a joke, but he also felt bad for the person lying there. And then he put the flower down and then it became like a running gag. So whenever he visited the graveyard he also put flowers down there and actually cleaned it off a bit uh, as he did the one he was visiting and I didn't really think much about it and then for maybe what was several years then he met a person who was at that grave or something like that and it turns out that that person had murdered a lot of people and there was a reason why nobody gave a shit about that. And uh, <laughs> he like the people are more go- going there planting weeds. And <laughs> yeah, and of course the, the the person standing there, which he got then into talking to, is like somebody keeps putting flowers down, and we don't get it because he he murdered someone maybe several people or something and it was a terrible human being but somebody keeps putting flowers here and it just started like recently and then of course he had to break down and that was me and it started as a running gag and something like that and i think those uh i think the story ended by actually those two going out for a coffee because this was too hilarious story to not just 
try to figure out who this guy is who randomly just decided, oh, maybe I'll put down flowers on the neighboring grave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but th- that that could be if you should pick a grave where you see someone has put down flowers. And then, of course, you go and put down a big bouquet yourself and, and you write something on a card like, I miss you or something. And then, of course, everybody's going to buy <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> oh no, that's so bad. I see, I see. I see. There are people who actually they offer those services. You you can pay them to attend your funeral just to stand in the back and cry, and then people will ask, "Who was that?" <laughs> oh, if you want to be a real real asshole about something, just put down flowers with "I miss you, Dad" on someone's <laughs> grave. <laughs> <laughs> really mess up someone's legacy <laughs> yeah but that that's a nice segue i i think i mentioned it earlier but m- my father was a sailor in his younger days and of course he, he have told stories but we never suspect that he has been doing anything fishy but then again we don't know and i really oppose to those um, web pages where you can send in your blood or something and they will analyze it and uh, like trying to find your heritage and so on but a small part in me is like okay but if i do that and then suddenly it's just oh you got a brother in uh, baja and uh, <laughs> you got a sister in the philippines <laughs> i mean you never know and if that was the case of course he wouldn't tell anyone so we wouldn't know but of course and that not just because he's a sailor uh, but you have that stereotypical pictures of those guys in the early days so was your dad ginger as well (laughs) yeah maybe there's some ginger uh, taiwanese uh, (laughs) people walking around (laughs) with a a receding hairline and uh, yeah (laughs) if you uh, add your dna to that database someone else can find you the same way yeah yeah, but that'd be so. All of a sudden, you you get a visit from yeah, but I w- I wouldn't from a half sibling. I wouldn't mind. That would be awesome. I mean, I don't. I can have a lot of siblings. That that's just fun. I like the one I have. Having a couple of more wouldn't hurt. I don't have any. I don't want any either. <laughs> the child, KJ. Yep. Oh, Doesn't that show? That explains everything. <laughs> yeah, that explains yeah. a lot. I'm one of four, and I'm, and... I'm the youngest. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, that, that explains. explains a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, KJ, change of subject. Um, you yeah. said you've got a secret project that you were working on for that you couldn't reveal up until you went to up until last week. Yeah. What was it? Uh, ah, this. Uh, <laughs> I did another version of my uh, logo shirt, and it had to be a secret before because uh, I brought one and gave it to Hor. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I didn't uh... because I I knew that we were gonna gonna meet, and uh, he uh, at one point said that he didn't have enough maker t-shirts. So then I thought, well, I'd be a nice friend and make oh, one nice. for him. Yeah, that was very nice. Um, I did. We did discuss just matching outfit tonight, and just don't say anything, and then <laughs> see if you could spot it. But I I've been down straight away. <laughs> I was. I mean, the camera angles doesn't really show it, so. Well, I could straighten up, but uh, I was frantically <laughs> painting in my workshop before uh, recording the podcast, so I, I'm wearing an old T-shirt and a sweater. <laughs> I, I thought can... you were saying you, you totally ruined it, so <laughs> it's in the trash now. Did you screen print it? Uh, no, uh, I I uh, I cut out, out my logo on uh, what's it called, self adhesive paper. Okay. And then you put it out, and you then use the textile spray paint oh, cool. to make it. So it's really, um, you can find I have a, a build video of the the one I did before, which is the opposite, where where I just the logo was was the taped part, and I spray paint all around oh, it, okay. so it's a cloud yeah, yeah. around it. But this is the inverse of that. Um, sounds it sounds mm. like I don't watch videos now, but I've watched every video since I've been following you. Let me just say that, <laughs> and I do try and <laughs> yeah, catch up on. Some of your old ones as well. Both yeah, no one watches old videos, so that's fine. That's fine. But if if you feel really left out, I can make you one as well. Well, I, I 
I'm not going to ask for one. I just just expect one now. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you get your card that I made for you both? Yeah. Yes. 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 Brilliant. I forgot about. I thought that. it'd be interesting for you, Havar, to see the detail that the laser can do. Yeah, that was really nice. Um, I think it's my phone uh, having a bit of trouble picking up the QR code if there is a brightly lit room because yeah. there are some reflections there uh, yeah, which it's a bit of a don't... tricky thing to do it just looks cool but I was thinking could you have a white card and then a black QR code but of course you are etching away with the laser so then you need a a white material with a black core do you, you get you can get acrylics actually that are like that yeah so yeah that's completely doable yeah but I just thought I just thought you'd be interested to see the detail that it can put into something. I think it's mind blowing. Yeah, yeah it was really good. Better than expected. Yeah. So is this um, is this some? <laughs> what is this in the <laughs> when you get it? It just um, painted. It just just comes as a piece a, pla- of a black card basically. Yeah. 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 And you just um, you just etch away. I think it must be just be a painted surface or a powder coated surface, one or the other. But, yeah, it feels yeah. really. It looks really great. So another reason for getting a laser. Bummer. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I also started looking at 3D printers this week, and oh. of course, and it it's a it's a jungle, <laughs> but I got a couple of pointers from people who already have them, and there are some decent spec ones out there that doesn't cost an arm and a leg, uh, but then again, it's it doesn't. It's going to be a supplement to a laser anyway because they don't have any overlapping features in my book. So, but that might be cheaper. And then, of course, is that a lower? Is that then a lower hanging fruit? Should I get one of those? But then again, I, I think it was uh, the Saturday's podcast uh, with the three northern makers where they talked about tools that you should always get a tool for the task at hand. Don't buy tools for a project you might do somewhere down the line. Yeah. And I don't have a specific project where I need a 3D printer. Although it would be nice to have, but if I buy it now, it might just be sitting in my workshop for half a year before I really need it. But uh, It's tricky on that because I bought the laser without a specific project in mind, but I knew I'd be able to add extra dimensions to some of my projects, even if it is just engraving the logo on it. But, you know, I've used it for cutting acrylics and... All sorts in the meantime and if, if i hadn't got one i wouldn't have used it for that i still could have done the project without it but it just you know it's just it's just an extra element and i think if i had a 3d printer then you know to start adding 3d printed parts to a wooden project and whatnot so, you know just adds that extra dimension it'd be more interesting i think but what i was thinking and it's a, it's a problem getting a strong enough laser for cutting thick materials but it would be nice if you had a handheld laser in the configuration of something like the Shaper Origin that you can load the files in and you have no size restrictions because you just move it by hand and as long as you keep it within the lines the laser will correct. But I'm thinking a handheld powerful laser is <laughs> that's a accident waiting to happen I guess. That's so uh, the the more powerful ones are yeah. behind protective glass and steel casing so uh, there is a reason for that I guess. Yeah, there are there are some some that work like that, but they are not that They're powerful. They're just engraving they? lasers. Yeah. yeah, that might be. Yeah. Otherwise it sounds like something you would want if you're doing a bank heist yeah. or something like <laughs> yeah. that. Just putting it on the safe and <laughs> my, my, like an uh, uh, <laughs> like putting a lightsaber through a door in yeah. Star Wars. My, my laser in, engraving Glenn was here on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> pub, public <laughs> statues. <and so> on. <laughs> well, that's a Banksy move. <laughs> uh, imagine going to the bank job and having the, the wrong file loaded. So you start to etch your logo <laughs> yeah. into the bank wall. Oh. My laser has built in safety. It has a um, safety glass on the actual laser unit itself. And if you pick up and tilt the laser over a certain degree it cuts out automatically it cuts out of the window <laughs> <laughs> i think i never asked Wh- which one is it i've got the atom stack x pro 7 oh that one yeah we- oh, that one. <laughs> we- 
which was the flag. He, he has a video yeah. on it. It was the uh, it was the flagship laser, and before it arrived, I think they'd already put out two more, much more powerful models. <laughs> yeah, I was looking into. I, I think it's called Laser Pecker or something, which is a small handheld one, yeah. which it can do engraving and it can also do some cutting. <laughs> it's such a great yeah. name. <laughs> it's brilliant. Uh, and then, of course, it has this uh, feed through, so you can actually laser on longer pieces. And then it has the accessories also for the rotating, uh, for yeah. printing on round surfaces. But it's kind of pricey. And I was thinking, even if I got that one, I would still need or at least want a bigger one. So I'm thinking, I'm going to skip over buying the small handheld one. Of course, it, it it's nice because it was uh, like you could bring it with you and put it up against anything, basically, and uh, engrave your logo. You you aren't really... Just bear in mind that the cards I'd sent you two guys, the uh, so the number one crude mistakes logo took about eight minutes to engrave. That's a long time to stand there holding a laser. If, I don't know how quickly the laser pecker works. But yeah. Seven minutes is a, a long, a long time to stand in one place. In, I couldn't do it. <laughs> Can't even sit down for that long <laughs> without moving. Yeah, but that's a, that's a good point. If you're just gonna free holding it against the surface, that's gonna seven minutes is a long time. Like brightening up a tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> Put putting some extra information in. <laughs> a QR P- code. P.S. He was a prick. <laughs> <laughs> on every tombstone in the entire cemetery <laughs> no I would only do it on the ones deserving it I would would you not just engrave I'm with stupid on it <laughs> with an arrow pointing <laughs> to the next one <laughs> <laughs> me too and an arrow yeah. pointing back <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, it's been on my wish list for a long time and I'm thinking next holiday, I might be getting a drone. Like the FPV one with the goggles, mm. which actually feels like you're inside it when you're flying. I don't need it for my projects at all, but I really want one. <laughs> Why don't you have a little practice <laughs> um, with a cheap drone? Because mm. I, I got one from Timu. I, I had that and it, it's at the bottom of the sea. <laughs> 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 so that's that's why I'm thinking I should get. A... Is that an indicator? Yeah. For you? Maybe you should get a slightly. Just stick with the least, you know, the not very expensive ones. <laughs> if you're going to put them at the bottom of the sea. Yeah, that, that's the thing because if you if you get up to that level, they have the the safety switch that you if if you lose any sort of control, you just flick it and it stops on the fraction of a second and just hovering, and then you can just press the button once again and it doubles back the way it came so it doesn't hit anything so my stepfather's got a, a quite an expensive drone and he um he's also into bowling not temping bowling the the stuff they do on grass and uh he was filming down at his bowls club and set the home function to the bowls club and then went home and a week or so later just playing at home <laughs> <laughs> he set the drone to come home just press the come home button <laughs> and it started making its way, you know, six miles away to the bowling club. <laughs> but I think there's yeah, laws against guess, that. Guess what he did then? He didn't get in his car, he didn't try and reprogram it. He started running, physically running after it. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that is a problem. I, I've, I follow a couple of uh, sailors that putting out uh, of course beautiful drone footage but of course a moving boat has the same problem i mean the drone remembers where it took off and then of course some or most of the drones now have like the safety program built into them that if they lose connection or anything then they return to the starting point but when you're filming anything moving of course especially a sailboat then that point of return is maybe a couple of miles behind you in open water and when you lose the connection with the drone you can just sit back and watch it just fly back to that point and dive itself to a certain death (laughs) because there's no way you can reach back there to meet it again (laughs) 
Yeah, that's why I'm never getting a drone. I would be too. Yeah, that's too much money in the sky. That's why you should just start with the Timu ones. I think it was yeah. two pound ninety seven or something. It cost me. <laughs> And it's great. It flies really well. Yeah, I don't, Does, I don't have. A... Doesn't do so well in the water though. No, but that's that's the problem. That's why I want the one with the goggles because I had RC cars when I was a kid. I had a RC boat, and then me and my father bought this kit where we built an RC plane. But before we even completed it. I lost interest because I've seen others fly them and of course you take off and then you fly for five seconds and then it's a small dot and you have to turn it around before it goes so far away that you can't see which is back and forth and then it just fly past you again for 10 seconds and then you have to turn and that is boring after a while and when you start to seeing the footage that some people are doing with the drones where they're flying in between trees and buildings and everything then seeing a small black dot like a, a mosquito on the sky making the same noise just flying back and forth doesn't really inspire me to get one no. but then again they are pricey so i could i could get a new i could get my harvey Banzo for that price so yeah there you go. yeah that's tricky yeah. isn't it it's the, the, i mean that's the thing it's there. There are other things higher on the priority. Filming, you can dr- filming yeah. in your workshop with the drone's not that great. I have tried. <laughs> no. <laughs> but then again, you can't fly your bandsaw. Or can not you? <laughs> yeah. But you can't cut with your drone either. Yeah. You can. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely have uh, oh. four choppy blades on them. How many times haven't you used a drill and you're going to drill a... Like, you drill a couple of holes and then you use it to, like, break the barrier between the holes because you want a slot? Who haven't done oh, yeah. that with the all drill the up and down and all just... All the time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 45 degrees. <laughs> yeah. And, and still, I have now, of course, a jigsaw, but, I mean, getting that out and finding the blade and no i just i just drill three holes and then i just <laughs> between them and <laughs> i used to have a drill bit with a, a like a grinding bit down the side so you could do that legitimately yeah i actually saw an advert for uh, those kind of drill bits yeah. that's uh I mean, it more burnt its way through after you'd used it a couple of times but it still worked oh, yeah i mean that if it works it works <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then, and then again, of course, you you need to do something about the structural integrity of the entire drill. But why not put a metal plate on the bottom of the battery? Because we use it as a hammer anyway. So why don't you build a drill that you can actually? I mean, they call it a hammer drill, but it's and you really shouldn't that is do genius. that. Genius. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, use the use the battery as a hammer. <laughs> if you've seen the uh, hydraulic press channels latest video. You definitely should look at that when it comes to batteries and yeah, but that and, that's what I mean. And force you should build the drill for that purpose. I mean, and it would be. I mean, as far as I know, Bosch doesn't make hammers, so I mean, they would like to ha- have people stay on their platform. So if they could build their drill in such a way that you could also use it as a hammer. I wouldn't put the drill down to switch to a hammer because I already have it. So I mean, it's a it's a win win for for the manufacturer and me. And then I'm thinking you could add other. But how, how do you control test that to see? Oh, but that that would not work. But I mean, they <laughs> they are the tool manufacturer. Day. That that's that's for them to find out. I'm just telling you, I want that product. Now they can make it happen. And of course, I'm 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 putting myself out there. I I can join a couple of design brief meetings. Uh, I can probably think of other functions I could want in a drill as well. I mean, they have put Bluetooth in hand drills now. I mean, if they have deemed that a necessary feature, then I mean a, a hammer attachment shouldn't be far off. <laughs> I think the hard part is making the electronics withstand the the impacts. My, my drill is a hammer drill, as well. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, you have... Yes, that is what it <laughs> means. Yes, good on you. Oh, that would be so great, returning it to the shop. I mean, it, <laughs> it broke. Okay, here's a new one. Hold on. After a couple of days, it came back again. Still broken. I mean, why do you keep breaking them? I mean, it says hammer drills, and after I've driven in the fourth uh, seven-inch nail, it just stops working. <laughs> <laughs> Why did they make them out of plastic? It's stupid. <laughs> Maybe that's where we should start doing having a, a bit that is actually a hammer. <laughs> you can use it holding it the same way. <sighs> start there and see how it goes. Oh. No, it's yeah, not I got, No, it's oh, wrap up. I, I, saw, <laughs> I saw this guy. He uh, he casted his fist. Uh, and made a hammerhead out of his fist. But I was thinking, oh. could I make a mold so I can make a metal casting <laughs> of a power drill, but then oh, with a the hole inside, so, so, so I can put <laughs> yeah, a handle on it, so I can actually have a hammer that looks like a drill. I mean, it's a hammer drill. Perfect. I need to... So if there's anyone out there who uh, has a small forge uh, and do... Uh, light uh, brass metal castings uh, hit me up <laughs> well rasmus isn't very far away from you apparently is he no but i'm not sure if we just do uh, like a uh, blacksmithing or do we do that. casting as of metal as well i don't think so but, but it's, it's, an, it's, it's a nice place to start i mean yeah. he definitely knows some guys um yeah i think there are someone not far from me also who do castings but I mean, if they do it on an industrial scale or for companies and so on, then they might just look weird at me when I tell them what I'm planning on doing. <laughs> ah, that's probably not the worst they've seen. I think that's a really good idea, actually. You could make yourself a really cool little like mallet-sized hammer drill, couldn't you? I think that'd be really nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do that straight away afterwards. I'm just going to start sketching. And... I don't think you need to sketch it all. You can just take a picture of your existing one, surely. Yeah. I have an old <laughs> I have an old drill that is ready for retirement, so I could just use that for making a cast. Make a lead one. <laughs> you do that. A report back. Make one out of lead. You can do that at home. <laughs> I was thinking about I could get those plaster molds and I could make one in rubber, but I can't really see. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> is that a very specific sex toy or <laughs> what, what's the usage for that? <laughs> I, can't, I can't really uh-huh. see. <laughs> As I said, it's time to, to round off, I think. <laughs> Go on, do a wrap KJ. Thanks for listening to Norman Crude Mistakes. If the stars align and the gods are willing, we'll be back next week with another episode. Take care of yourself. Brilliant. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh. Have a good one.